welcome to the 2017 EPSEP uh, annual conference. I would invite our President Mbata to please come forward and address us. Our aim should be financial inclusion for all. True, we need financial coaching, including business owners and employees, youth groups and organizations, working professionals, students and organizations. However, what we need more now are equitable opportunities for black firms and black professionals. It is not just about whether we are going to be beneficiaries over the near to medium term, but the choice we make on the 18th of December will determine the future we bequeath to our children. And whether it's a situation over the next five years where the stock market rises fivefold in five years, like it did between 2000 and 2008, or whether it merely goes from one rand to one rand in 70, as has been the case over the last roughly eight years. I ask the first panel discussion. The topic we've got today is all about transformation to moving South Africa to a more normal and equal society. But how do we get inclusive economic growth? Because without the economy growing, there is no space for accelerating transformation as such. How does this contribute to making the lives of ordinary South Africans better? What are the practical solutions in five years' time? Is it just economic growth or do we need more regulation? To practically implement transformation, it also starts with us. We are decision makers in our own personal spaces. So skills development for me, it's key. And I think we, some of us who have gone through programs that have almost ensure that we do develop skills. So practically, um, I would start with ourselves. And I'd like to understand what that means in your mind from a practical sense. At what level do we start to groom those uh, young people? The financial sector is not about people with a commerce background. As black shareholders, one doesn't have the luxury of simply doing a financial transaction and then it ends there. At all levels, we have to actively fight for it. But it's creating the environment and the platform for black professionals, black businesses to thrive and succeed and encourage legislation and policy frameworks that encourage that. These investment missions are important for the direct dialogue, they're important to build relationships because relationships trump geography, um, and it's also important to find institutional partners locally here to do business with. It's important to find partners in the U.S. or wherever, so reach out. Use this as an opportunity for the direct building of relationships. And I think at the end of the day, if we continue on this path, um, inclusion within our countries is going to improve, but also we in this room can drive inclusion at a macro and global level, and I think we all have a responsibility. So the question that you ask about what are we transforming and I think to extend it further, uh, who for? The previously excluded, the people who do not have the opportunities. So there's many facets I would think of in terms of unlocking capital, uh, globally capital formation and channeling capital between entities is still very topical. When government enter into any co economic activity with the private sector, uh, um, DEE must be one of the, 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 the requirements. If we are only going to continue only at seeking transformation, for, for instance, an economy or a financial sector that was never designed to benefit black people. There are people that are looking up to you, that your action, your day-to-day your, your -day action, it gives them hope that it is possible for them. So I wanted to encourage each and every one of you in here to step up as role models and build the next role models of the future. That is one thing that can contribute towards a transformation in our society. We've acknowledged that perhaps what we're less good at is um, establishing exactly what we're going to do to fix the problems, who is going to fix the problems, and by when are these problems going to be fixed. In the industry, when you talk about transformation, is let's get the growth coming first, and then we will think about including people in the process. So I think what we must say as South African is that we are in a crisis today, and then let's emerge out of this crisis. We're not going to emerge the same way as we came into the crisis. 
Ben Okri asks, will you be at the harvest amongst the gatherers of new fruits? Then you must begin today to remake your mental and spiritual mind and join the warriors and celebrants of freedom, the realizers of great dreams. And I hope that's what you become, that you become the warriors and the celebrants of freedom and the realizers of great dreams. Thank you very much and have a good evening. Thanks. Good evening. I would like to firstly also welcome the Deputy Minister of Finance, uh, the Honorable Swissop Telezi, the patron of APCP, is in the room. I would also want to welcome uh, the CEO of RMB, James, our gold sponsor. We need to unite around what is it that can generate jobs, that can generate growth in different sectors. And when we work together, both government and private sector, we will be able to build the necessary confidence that can help us to attract even more and more, to, uh, more, more, and more uh, investments from outside the country. But there's a huge amount of uninvested money that lies around in South Africa. And again, we need to engage all those uh, you know, fund holders to say to them that the growth in this country does depend on all of us putting our head on the wheel. And so out of all of this discussion that you're going to have, we will be looking forward to more and more uh, suggestions and recommendations that will help us as we try to build this economy uh, you know, uh, afresh. But what we want to uh, confirm is that we will ensure that the leadership continues to engage both from ruling party and government with business to make sure that we build this economy and get a much better growth than what we have today. It's important for us to be able to get that growth, to be able to reduce unemployment and reduce uh, the poverty that we face. About the need for us to recognize our own black excellence. After all, APSEP is an institution and an organization that is established to lead the way for economic transformation in this country. If we don't recognize our own black excellence, then who will? Good evening, everyone. We're very proud to be able to support an event uh, like this evening. Tonight is about recognizing the successes and the progress uh, that is being made in terms of South Africa and the financial services uh, transformation journey. Without further ado, I would like to invite over to the stage Ms. Lindy, who is the chair of the adjudicators. Yeah, just to quickly recap, you know, shortly, the, the, these awards, essentially they celebrate the progress and outstanding achievements by professionals and institutions. And they recognize and celebrate excellence, identify the budding talent, and most importantly, you know, recognize this transformative role or leadership that shapes the future um, of our financial services um, industry. I would like to call onto the stage my co-panelists. Um, without wasting more time, I would like to invite uh, our next speaker, who is uh, Mr. Sfiso Butelezi. He is the Deputy Minister of Finance uh, for our country. He is also the patron APSEP. Good evening. And thank you for the kind and auspicious invitation to address this body that you have built since the dawn of our democratic dispensation. It is a source of great pride to me that I'm a patron of APSIP, an organization which I hold in inestimable regard for its pioneering work in transformation and human capital development in the financial sector. More than merely being a political imperative, transformation is essentially a business imperative, and that is imperative that we we, we build teams with a diverse range of abilities and skill sets because that ability to challenge the status quo is what makes for a truly innovative business. Indeed, we need an economy that works for all South Africans. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, 
I'd like to officially commence the awards ceremony with Vision 2025 Awards. President of APSIP, Mr. Spongiseni, if you can come up to the stage, as well as our patron, Mr. Sfiso Butelezi, if you can join us as well for these awards. The first award goes to the Student of the Year Award, and the award goes to Billy Pillay from the University of Limpopo. for the second award, and this category is the Student Chapter of the Year Award. And the winning university is Vets University. As APSIP, it would be remiss of us to not recognize the role that women have played in this industry. And as such, we have, as one of Vision 2025's categories, recognizing the Leading Women Owned Business Award. The award in this um, area will be represented by Sonia Debrain Sibotza from Identity Partners and Ethos Private Equity. The winner is 274 Investment Managers. The next awards category is the Asset Management as well as the Stockbroking um, Industry Awards. To start with, we'd like to recognize leaders in the um, Domestic Listed Equity Fund Manager of the Year. And the winner, Mr. Peter Takandesa from Merchants Investment Manager. The second award in the asset management category is that of the Alternative Fund Manager of the Year. This award is sponsored by APSA Bank. Could uh, Mr. Petros Nkiaki please come to the stage to present the award? And the winner is 274 Investment Managers. <laughs> The third category uh, for this award is Multi-Asset uh, Fan Manager of the Year, and the award is sponsored by Liberty Life, and it will be presented by Mr. Kolisa Vapi. The winner is Sumesh Chetty. <laughs> Sumesh Chetty could not make it tonight, so he's asked one of his colleagues to please come and pick the award up for him. The fourth category is Fixed Income Fan Manager of the Year, and this award is once again sponsored by Liberty Group with Mr. Kolisa Vapi during the presentation. And the winner is Balondolozi Bond Fund. The fourth category is the best black owned investment management firm. The award is sponsored by the IDC and it will be presented by Ms. Zama Lutuli. The winner is Argon Asset Management. We are recognizing the award for the most transformed retirement fund of the year. This award is sponsored by Royal Investment Managers and will be presented by Ms. Snowy Masakale and Ms. Cabello Rejozzo. And the winner is ESCOM Pension and Provident Fund. The next award category is for the stockbroking segment. And for this, we'll start with the Research Analyst of the Year. This award is sponsored by Sanlam Investment Managers and will be presented by Mr. Nicholas Kagwana. And the winner is Mr. Khatebe Sipamla. Now, 
now we're moving on to the investment banking category. The first award is Corporate Finance, fi Corporate Finance Team of the Year. And this award is sponsored by Rand Merchant Bank. I'd like to ask Mandla Mbuyazi to come to the stage to present the award. And the winner of this award is Mr. Tepiso Makofane. All right, the second award in this category is Deal of the Year Award. And this award is sponsored by APSA Bank, and it will be presented by Mr. Petros Nkiaki. And the winner is Mr. Jared Moody. I'm proud to announce tonight um, the, the award for the Development Finance Institution of the Year and this will be sponsored by Liberty Life. The winner of this award is the Small Enterprise Finance Agency. <laughs> now we're moving to the corporate category. The first award in this category is Economist or Economics Team of the Year. And this award is sponsored by Royal Investment Managers and will be presented by Ms. Snowy Masakale. And the winner is Dr. Tabilioka of Argon Asset Management. Exploring your every curve, the lines you say. The second award in, the, in this category is Chief Finance Officer of the Year Award. And this award is sponsored by the Industrial Development Corporation. It will be presented by Zama Lutuli. Zama, if you can just come over, please, to present the award. And the winner of this award is R.T. Takodin from the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. <laughs> Moving on to the third award category, and this is the CEO of the Year Award. This award is sponsored by Sanlam Investments and will be presented by Mr. Nicolas Treguana. And the winner of the CEO of the Year Award is Andile Ramabunga. The first award under the Game Change Awards goes to is a special recognition award. Once again, we do not have finalists on this award. And the winner of this award is Ms. Pulo Ledeka, founder and CEO of IDF Capital. Our second award under the Game Change Award category is a company which has made significant strides in transforming the financial services sector. And the winner of this award is Standard Bank. The next award is Women of the Year. And the winner is Ms. Fatima Vowder. Founder and Managing Director of 274 Investment Managers. We now have the CEO of the Decade Award. And the winner of the CEO of the Decade Award is Mr. Jeffrey Kena, Chief Executive Officer of the Industrial Development but next we've got our Lifetime Achievement Award um, and this is really just in recognition of someone who has demonstrated excellence for a very long period of time. The winner of the Lifetime Achievement Award goes to none other than our Reserve Bank Governor, Mr. Lisecha Khanyako. You 
because I am a proud South African. And as a South African, I am an eternal optimist. And I am a South African who understands that we are a country that had conquered adversity. This too shall pass, and it is not just going to pass because of some accident of history, but because as a society faced with adversity, we are able to master our strength, mobilize ourselves, and deal with the challenges that face us. And we will be able to conquer these challenges, and we shall triumph. Before I leave, I'd like to invite Delphin Governor to give a word of thanks. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a pleasure. Um, so in closing, uh, thank you to everyone. Tomorrow, we're going to wake up. And as eternal optimists, in the words of our Reserve Bank Governor, we're going to wake up tomorrow and we're going to do good for our country. Thank you. golfers in the rain. <laughs> yeah, to have fun. One, one part. It's the only way to go. Yeah, I feel great, man. I feel great. Man. <laughs> How? Thank you. I don't listen to myself. <laughs> yeah, what a beauty. Good, buddy. It's the M2. <laughs> Invest in golf. It's enough, pop. <laughs> Considering the amount of sweat that we saw in the drain pipes today, I think everyone had fun and I think everyone did their best. Obviously, it's a prize giving today, so not everyone can win. Mr. Carl Tobajan, who's been, a, who's been one, of the, he's, he's one of the absolute legends, and Mr. Carl Tobajan, on behalf of RMB, please. Uh, Mr. President, uh, we are proud as RMB to be associated with your organization and we want to congratulate you for the uh, job that you've been doing uh, as APSIP uh, over the years and from now on trust that you've got a partner in the financial service sector in terms of sponsoring some of the events and making sure that we are uplift the, the or we transform the, the, the financial services sector to bring in black talent which we believe that can make a difference in the sector. But the role of partnering with APSIP cannot be fully delegated to RMB only. And that's why you are here. We need those partnerships in their numbers. We need to multiply them, we need to grow them year in, year out, so that we have a sustainable uh, bursary program going forward and we help in nurturing young people who must be like us in the future. Start with the four balls. The fourth prize goes to Petros Muopelo, Mpilo Lamini, Smang Ankoana, and Maletola Matube. And uh, the third prize goes to Sisa Mbuli, Joy Balepile, Albert Doyoyo, and Sbongi Lemshang. And the second prize goes to Sipu Makalema, 
Tobela Maponya, Sepu Mudisa, and Mloja. Mloja has no hashtag. And the guys who did their best for young people of this country. Sipo, Situ, Bongi, Munyandeni, Masiko, Lebudi, and Mandla Mabas. Now we go to nearest to the pin. On the sixth hole, Ucholinda Mgomez. And on the thirteenth hole, Smang and Kowan. The longest drive goes to, and once again, the former Absa Bursa. The seventeenth hole, Gregory Macau.